economics this morning, uh, Linda Nazareth. Now it's time to go back down to PDAC. New Gold has announced a further increase in gold resources at its Blackwater project in BC. Let's head to PDAC, where New Gold's chairman, Randall Oliphant, is standing by with Andy Bell. Andy. Hi, Amarty. Thanks very much. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about gigantic mines, and these are mines, of course, globally, that produce more than half a million ounces a year. We got a guy here. He's the boss of New Gold chairman, Randall Oliphant, former boss of Barrick, of course. A lot of buzz about your big Blackwater project in BC. It, you might start production there in 2017, but this sucker is going to produce 600,000 ounces a year, you hope. Yeah, that's right, Andy. Uh, you can't, I can't tell you how excited we are about it. It just keeps growing. In fact, since we've owned it, we've been finding in the order of 400,000 ounces a month. And our, our release this morning, you know, is another over 400,000 ounces just in December's drilling. So we don't know how big it's, it's going to be. We don't know uh, how many deposits we're going to have there, but already it's 7.8 million ounces and we're, we're remarkably excited. Now, nearer term, you've got another mine in BC, New Afton, and by reports, you've got great relations with the Aboriginal people, uh, the local Aboriginal groups, but you're hoping to start production in New Afton this year. Uh, this year. Yeah, that'll be a seminal moment for us. Uh, New Afton will start up. Uh, it's about a $750 million project, but should generate about $300 million a year for us, mm -hmm. more than double what we produce from our three mines. Uh, our relations with First Nations are outstanding. They've been very supportive. Uh, we're doing everything we can to help them. Uh, a, third, a quarter of our employees are from those groups, and uh, everything's off to a great start. So right now, you, your production is just under half a million ounces a year, so it makes you mid-tier, but you, you hope to get to one million ounces a year by 2017, but that's before Blackwater kicks in. Yeah, well, we're at about 400,000 ounces today. Then we've got New Afton starting up. Then we've got our interest in El Moro, then Blackwater. Uh, we think it's the most significant growth profile of any gold company in the world. And then down in Chile, you have a big stake in the El Moro mine. Yes. But, of course, Gold Corp and Barrick are fighting over that one. Yeah, they are. And that, I think that's a testament to how outstanding an asset it is. Uh, the two biggest market cap companies in the world don't fight over something unless it's really important. The nice thing from our perspective is nobody's contesting who owns 30% of it. We both, either one of them would be a great partner. Gold Corp's our partner now. We think that they're going to prevail in the litigation, but we'll see in the coming months. So we're at 2012 now. Say eight years out, once Blackwater is up and running, what kind of production would you think you'll have, Randall? It'll be over a million ounces. Mm -hmm. And that's just based on what we have in our pipeline today. And it assumes that we don't do anything over that period. Of course, New Gold's been a remarkably active company. In the last three or four years, about five companies have come together to form what we are today and we're actively looking for more to add to our portfolio. Looking at your stock though, is it frustrating? It's down around 2% in the past year. Yeah, we're not that concerned about it, Andy. Uh, our stock price, you know, since we did the last merger is about four times what it was. We've been a top performer every year. We've been outperforming the index. We're very confident that with growing production, lowest quartile costs in our industry, finding more gold, uh, our stock will do very well. So tell us about Australia because um, you have the peak gold mines there and of course they're going to be a smaller and smaller part of your operation yes. in years to come but you were ha you had trouble with increasing costs there so are things in Australia pretty insane with the massive level of investment going on? Oh costs are dramatically high in Australia. The average cost of producing gold is about a thousand dollars an ounce. Our costs are in the order of 600 which is high for us because our average cost last year was 447 dollars an ounce. But uh, the cost pressures are unbelievable. The currency has been very strong. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a very expensive place to do business. But one of the benefits that we have is we get 14 million pounds of copper a year there. So copper moves along with the input costs, and that's what helps keep our costs, you know, well below Australian average costs. I mean, how much of your company's value is going to come from copper in the next few years? I know it's hard to, I mean, just take Blackwater. I mean, there's, there's a, a pile of copper there, isn't there? Well, um, we have some copper with our new Afton mine, some copper with uh, El Moro, but then Blackwater is, is gold uh, with a significant silver credit. Oh, okay. So we'll probably peak around 25% copper uh, in the next couple of years, but then when Blackwater comes on stream, you know, our weighting will increasingly go to gold. We'll probably be in the order of 85% precious metals. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Blackwater uh, had copper, so it's silver as well as yes. gold. Okay. So you would say once Blackwater's in there, about 15% copper base yes. metals. Yeah. Because yeah. it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, Barrick, your old shop, making a major wager on copper right now with the Equinox takeout. Yeah, well, you know, copper's a wonderful metal and it's been doing well, and it's been one of the factors in keeping our costs down. So we like gold, we like copper as well, and both of them really help fuel our company. But you're not in Africa or Russia. Or Kazakhstan, you're a bit wary of those places? 
Well, the mandate of New Gold is to focus in politically secured jurisdictions. Um, we've done business in those places. There, you know, companies do very well there. But for us, it's it's Canada, the U.S., Mexico, Chile, and Australia. Uh, we can grow our business significantly by focusing in politically secure places. An uh, investor looking at your stock must think, well, Randall, he's he's ramping up New Afton, and he's going to be ramp ramping up Blackwater a few years down the road. We've seen so many mines. It's just it's darn complicated ramping up a mine. So there is execution risk there, isn't there? Well, people could rightly be concerned, but if they look at our track record, we've uh, we brought in uh, our, our Mesquite mine, our Cerro San Pedro mine in the last three years. Uh, New Afton is about the only mine I'm aware of that's still on schedule, still on budget. Uh, and part of it is it's right on the Trans-Canada Highway. It's 10 minutes outside of Kamloops, a city of 100,000 people. So by focusing in secure places, you know, we don't have all the risks of extreme altitude or infrastructure problems. Yeah, of course, uh, down in Chile, that El Moro project, that's way up in the Andes, though? Yeah, no, it is. Um, but we feel fortunate because Gold Corp have built a lot of mines, done them very well. Um, you know, there's lots of cushion in the capital budget there. Uh, there's other mines being built by Barrick and Tech in the neighborhood. So uh, there's lots of experience, and then we think that they'll do a great job with it. I mean, so you could be a few years down the road looking at a billion dollars in free cash flow every year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with metal prices being strong, and we think they're going to continue to be strong and go higher, uh, we're the in the lowest quartile of costs, so the cash flow generation is mm -hmm. incredible. So your market cap around five billion dollars and yeah. a billion dollars in cash flow. Are you going to get taken out? Do you think, Randall? Well, we do have a, a collection of assets that you know are are quite cherished by other companies. Where do you find you know New Afton generating three hundred million a year? Our interest in El Moro three hundred million dollars a year, and then maybe six hundred million a year from Blackwater. Uh, in largely a no-growth industry, all in politically secure places. Um, that's why they're attractive to our shareholders, and that's why they'd be attractive to others. Well, we're going to be talking to um, Gerald Panetton, the boss of Detour Gold, pretty soon. And, of course, he's about to open an enormous mine in Ontario. Yes. But Blackwater could ultimately be bigger. Yeah, well, today it'll probably be about the same size, but we just don't know. We've only owned this for eight months. It now looks like it's going to have a similar throughput rate to Detour. It's a similar grade. Uh, it's got some silver, um, but we don't know whether or not there's other deposits there or just ultimately what it will become, but the base case is pretty exciting. We'll be watching closely. Thanks for joining us, Randall. Thank you, Andy. Randall Oliphant, he's the chairman of New Gold. Back to you, Marty. All right, thanks so much for that interview, Andy. Andy Bell still down at uh, PDAC and will be for the rest of the day, so uh, check back in a little bit later. Now let's check in with CTV News Channel to see what else is making news this hour.